I've rebuilt a couple of SX Vipers. These are 2002-2003. Uh, the motors are similar to other Yamaha triples, except uh, these have the power valves. So I'm going to go through what I did to just take the engine out and a few other components. And then if I miss anything, I'll put it in the comments. Also, I, uh, I'll post other videos on how to remove the stator. Um how to rebuild the engine so forth so I'll be making those videos in the future but right now I'm just going to show you how to basically take this engine out first we're going to start with the air box and to do that we're going to disconnect this thing 10 millimeter loosen that nut back this out and then push this up and the end of the cable will be right there to take that cable out and then that'll release the tension and then you can move these cables off the air box. You can leave the choke cable on, which is, you can leave the choke cable on. That has enough slack. And then we're going to loosen all the uh, this Phillips screws on each boot. And while you're down there, you might as well loosen these boots down there too there's one on each you can pull this out that just pops out and then there's a uh, 10 millimeter bolt right there and then the air box will just lift up and out which gives you access to the carburetors so on the carburetors once you've loosened those three screws you've got this coolant hose right there um, it might be easier, it's, well it's easier to take it off from there, but you're going to lose some coolant. But if you take it off from here, um, you probably won't lose much coolant. But since we're going to be disassembling this engine out, just take it off from here and just let the engine coolant drain out. Um, just by, I just let the coolant just drain into a pan underneath. There is a, a screw, let me show you. This is the, the water pump. This is on the exhaust side. This bolt right here. They say to take this bolt out and let the coolant dr drain underneath the pan there. But it's uh, all just going to go underneath the snowmobile anyways. Um, also, uh, disconnect the negative terminal on the battery just in case. So, uh, to also to take the carbs out... This is the gas pump. It's gonna. This will be staying in place. But there are three hoses. One, two, three. They're going to the carburetors. I use vice grips just to cinch down on these clamps. Pull those clamps down and pull these hoses off. And there's only a, a couple of connectors. There's the TORS connector. And you can leave the clutch cable on I mean the choke cable and once those three boots are loosened the carb should just be able to come right off and then you can place them off to the side and then the pipes you can either do the pipes before or after the pipes are the muffler pretty easy I just put vice grips on the end of, under these springs only the springs are holding these in so just ch double check, make sure you have all the springs taken off. So just pull on them and then take all the muffling the pipes on. You can leave the exhaust manifold in. Um, you only have to take that off if you're doing the top end while the motor is still in the snowmobile. Well, it's a lot easier to take the manifold off. Um, with the engine out <clears throat> and another thing you can do beforehand is spray everything with PV blaster these uh, exhaust manifold nuts also spray these you can leave those in place and uh, next thing we can do is uh, it doesn't hurt to number them one two three and take these allen bolts off and those should just slide out if they're not too gummed up. 
to pull these out and once you've pulled those out take a look at them clean them before you put them back in and remember it's uh they go in so it's angled down the front angled downward like that before you put them in uh, the next thing we can do is we can remove the coil pack there's only four bolts holding those in one two three four and you might as well take the boot the boots up and take the spark plugs out and there's only one cable connector connecting that so you can disconnect that and then set that out of the way uh, now we want to remove the stator before we remove anything else don't remove any engine mounts and the stator is uh, down in there there's a bracket right here now normally if you're just replacing the the stator you don't have to take that bracket out but we're taking the engine out so you're gonna have to take this this um, bracket out we'll go over to the manual plus it always helps to get a nice shop manual so the first thing we do to take the stator out is this cover here is only four 12 millimeter bolts holding that on just take that off and place it off the side you don't have to dis disassemble anything of that and that's the bracket that you're gonna have to take off to get the engine out you don't have to take this bracket out to um, replace any parts of the stator so this bracket here uh, don't use an impact gun which I learned by mistake because the nuts behind some of these are welded and it broke the weld so these are tough to get out there's, there's a lot of um, uh, thread lock on these and uh, a couple of these are a little tight to get I use a 14 millimeter ratchet to get those out so then you get those out and here's the basics on how to take the uh, So once you get that off, um, there's three Allen bolts that hold this on here. Now the main reason we don't take the primary clutch off because uh, we're going to put a pipe in there to hold that in place because the nut holding that on is pretty tight. So you're going to have to use a breaker bar and to get that off. And of course, if the engine was out or if the, if the clutch was off, um, you'd have nothing to hold trying to get that nut off. So you're going to get that nut off. And then um, you're going to use a puller. And the puller that I got is, it's off of uh, Amazon. Let's see. Actually, I do have, a, I do have another video that I'm going to post that shows... Um, how to take that out and how to uh, fix that but one thing you, you will need that I didn't have be used before is that these three screws are Phillips aluminum Phillips and there's two screws that hold this on so these screws they're in there pretty tight and they're easy to strip so I use an impact gun just put it in there and put a hammer on it make sure it's in reverse and that'll save your day because I've had to drill one of these out uh, but once I w use the impact driver, that was good to go. So once you uh, disassemble this, make sure you disconnect these two wire connectors. You can take the uh, all the parts of the stator out. And then the next step after that is we're going to take <clears throat> the primary clutch off. So the first thing we do is put a 12 millimeter on there, pull it towards the back of the machine and pull it hard and that will give you expansion to get the belt off and then after you get the belt off <clears throat> there's a rubber cover right there take that rubber cover off and it's going to give you access to this nut 22 millimeter so use an extension to come through that hole and remove this 22 millimeter bolt and washer uh, some of the tricks that some people talk about, I've tried it, has doesn't work. You have to tilt the machine up at an angle, put some water in there, then put a lot of, 
of Teflon tape back on this. Put it back in <clears throat> and tighten it. They say it'll pop, but it didn't work for me. But what did work is <clears throat> get one of these off of eBay, 28 bucks. Make sure you grease the tip and the threads. Put it, take that, make sure that bolt and washer off. Put this back in. I use an impact driver and just you, you drive it clockwise back into place and then pop. That's a nice sound to hear and this whole assembly will come off. And then we're getting closer to taking the uh, the engine off. So um, we've got two coolant hoses. Once again, vice grips, pull that off. Have a pan underneath to catch the coolant. The other coolant hose is a little tough to get at. So that is on the back side. It's so going to connect it to the water pump. I found it easier once I got all the uh, engine brackets off. I was able to tilt the engine up a little bit to get access to that clamp. So, um, <clears throat> and then we're going to start taking the engine brackets. You don't have to take them completely off. Uh, there's an engine bracket that's down here. You have to take that one off because that's covering the, the oil pump. And the oil pump is a little tricky to get at so you do have access to disconnect a couple of the hoses and one of the hoses goes back to to here so you have to just disconnect that hose there this hose that's the one with the one-way valve the gas you can't take it off from there because the gas will just come out so if you're going to disconnect this hose there's a little one-way valve about here take the hose off from there and that one-way valve will keep the gas from uh, leaking out. So the oil pump, this we can find some pictures of it. Um, the oil pump I just leave in place, disconnect a couple of the hoses. Um, but that's another thing that there's this throttle cable. You can see it's kind of buried down in there. No, I'm sorry, not throttle cable, oil cable. And that's a little tricky to get at. So, once we get all the engine brackets off, we can tilt the engine up and you'll get access to take the end of this cable off. There's a couple of, uh, there's a 10 millimeter, I know, I'm sorry, 12 millimeter nut that kind of holds it onto the bracket. And then at the end of this cable, once you tilt this engine up to the side, you should be able to get to the end of that cable off and that's about one of the last steps that you have to do um, and once once you get that off this whole engine is going to go towards the muffler because this do, this doesn't move and then once you get that up that should come out let's see if I left, forgot anything here oh the starter leave the starter on don't don't disassemble that and the wires to those are really tough to get at with the engine in place. So the first one I struggled a lot. Then I realized the easiest way to get this out, you're going to either take off all your cable wraps or cut them. And then disconnect the positive off the relay. And then, of course, you already have the negative thing. And then pull those wires through. Leave it all connected to to the starter and uh, but the because those those nuts are really hard to get to so it's a lot easier just to pull that whole this is the uh, this is part of that just pull that all out and then uh, pull that out with the engine and then it's easier to get to um, get those nuts off and then once you get the uh, the engine out it's a lot easier to use <clears throat> you can only get a couple of these nuts off with with sockets and extensions but a 10 millimeter tilting ratchet is is the way to go to get these to get these off because they're in there they're in there tight so that should be let's see if i forgot anything all right so that should be it uh one other key is make sure you have separate baggies 
So I have a baggie for all, um, you know, certain certain nuts and bolts here. I have a baggie for the stator. When you take that stator out, don't lose the key. That's easy to to uh, to drop and uh, and keep a separate baggie for all your nuts and bolts for each part of the engine. So the next video I'll have is will be disassembling the engine and uh, splitting the splitting the crank and doing a top end.